Music has always been extremely important in the lives of men. Nonetheless, it has been able to maintain its state as an influence despite all the major social and technological changes our society has witnessed along the ages. Indeed, we can trace its presence in various different contexts back to the beginning of our recorded history. Therefore, it is no surprise that each ancient civilization was accustomed to the laws of harmony or already possessed very peculiar musical instruments and traditions. This might bring us back to the works of philosophers such as Plato, Pythagoras or Confucius, renowned to be among the first to investigate the inner nature of music and its implications. For instance, the concept that the whole entire universe worked following specific harmonic sequences which were themselves mirrored within musical laws was already a popular construct in Greek and Roman culture, and it has been the basis for any further discovery which came forth in other historical periods. This is what many philosophers and esotericists refer to as music of the spheres. Furthermore, this idea that music is indeed a phenomenon deeply rooted in nature and not simply a paradigm of a human society can be witnessed in many different sources prior to our modern age. Many scientists and philosophers throughout the Middle Ages or the Renaissance have come to rediscover in their work this very relationship. Therefore, this seems to be the prime reason why the concept of music as being a mere tool for mass entertainment or indoctrination is a relatively recent one, as in the past the purpose of music but also arts in general was instead to elevate the spirit of mankind. Given these premises, once again it is not coincidental to see that institutions such as the church have been extremely influential to determine the role which music had to play within society. In fact, for centuries the distinction between religious and profane was pretty much non-existent in all aspects of life, and this factor has heavily influenced the development of all arts. The various priesthoods regained the utmost authority in the artistic field, along with the various noble families in charge, which dictated the way musicians had to approach their craft, similarly to what record companies have been doing in more recent times. That is the reason why the work of many composers has been a mere byproduct of sacred music or something which was specifically targeted to appeal and please the several powerful people within the elite who represented the audience. In those times, even musical instruments were built differently and followed a set of standards which varied according to the domain of every single community. For instance, what we refer to as concert pitch oscillated between radically different values for at least four centuries, as the very first official commission to establish a standard concert pitch worldwide appeared in France just in 1859. It was only 1711 when the first pitchfork appeared, while we have to wait another century to witness the birth of our contemporary methods of measurements, with the birth of Irish Hertz in 1857. Among the most important contributors to our current standards which we might quote are Marie Mersenne, the godfather of the equal temperament system, or the physicians Joseph Saveur and Ernest Claudney, who are probably the first to have investigated the nature of concert pitch from a scientific point of view, and whose work is still regarded as fundamental by many scholars today. As a consequence, we might state that the establishment of a standard musical temperament and concert pitch has been arguably the most significant factor to determine the way music has been approached in modern times. The musical standards commonly used today pretty much all over the world have been developed through various decades between the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century, achieving the first official recognition thanks to the committees such as the International Standardizing Organization or the American Federation of Musicians. It is then when our current A equals 440 Hz started to be accepted as the official concert pitch worldwide. This new standard had encountered many supporters in the music community, especially in Germany and Austria, inspired by the work of famous musicians such as Richard Wagner, who tried to obtain a more brilliant sound for his compositions hence the request for higher pitches, but also in the political field, as some state that already in 1815 at the Congress of Vienna the Tsar of Russia, Alexander I, requested similar changes, supported by all the royal families of Europe. On the other side, while nowadays many musicians and experts are indeed aware about some of these historical facts we have just quoted, 
the vast majority of them seem to have just a partial understanding concerning fundamental details about the identity and reasons of the actual decision makers behind the standardization of A equals 440 Hz. In fact, the people who strived the most to accomplish these changes in the first decades of the 20th century were totally disconnected from any musical background and belonged to very powerful occult circles such as the Thule Society or the Jesuitic Order. These were individuals like Joseph Goebbels, the infamous minister of propaganda of the Nazi regime and among the most dedicated supporters of this tuning. Interestingly, there is overwhelming evidence that theirs hadn't been just mere propaganda, but also work of suppression of alternative opinions and movements in order to achieve their goals. This is the prime reason why, since then, almost the totality of the recordings we are subjected to are based on this very frequency, as most instruments, tuners, but also harmony books or entire orchestras are accustomed to A equals 440 Hz as being the only and official standard to follow. On the other hand, there is a vast number of people who have instead opposed and refuted the standard both in past and present times, offering a series of alternatives whose benefits appear to be backed up by a seemingly endless amount of evidence. The frequency which stands out more in this context appears to be A equals 432 Hz, in other cases equally referred to as C equals 128 Hz. In the past, this specific tone was already indicated by scholars such as Josef Saver and Ernest Kladny as the most appropriate pitch to be used. Same thing in the influential study by Jonathan Tannenbaum, The Foundations of Scientific Musical Tuning, where the benefits of the stone are strongly addressed, although the most widely renowned supporter of this tuning is indeed Giuseppe Verdi, who vehemently fought against the higher pitches which were starting to appear in the late 1900s and whose recommendations towards the use of A equals 432 Hz are still able to be seen in various of his personal letters. Furthermore, philanthropic organizations such as the Schiller Institute have continued such work, collecting an impressive amount of testimonies from the top musicians and singers of our times, such as famous tenors like Placido Domingo or Luciano Pavarotti, who have openly supported the specific tuning. Again, among other important figures who have openly supported this peculiar frequency are Rudolf Steiner, the famous theosophist and founder of the Anthroposophical Society, Maria Reynolds, the famous writer and musicologist. While all over the internet it is possible to witness a growing frenzy concerning this topic, with dozens of important researchers and journalists who have written several articles and books about the subject. Among these I might quote Ricardo T. Tuis, Flavia Vallega, Andrea Doria or Ananda Bosnam. While there seems to be a quite growing evidence towards the benefits of the specific tuning we have addressed, the so-called Verdi tuning, any logical conclusion we might bring clashes with a contradictory and yet self-evident reality, which is that the A equals 432 Hz concert pitch is still widely unknown by the vast majority of musicians who are still aligned to the official ISO standards, whether they might be aware or not of the consequences of this choice. Putting it more simply, why do we still use a tuning which seems to have such obscure origins, especially while there are better alternatives which have been widely suggested in the past? Many of the researches we have briefly quoted have managed to answer this question, offering startling conclusions, which although could seem outrageous to many which are not generally open to new and radical ideas. In fact, the possibility that our very institutions, such as our governments, could not only hide from us significant information but also fabricate alternative version of the facts to maintain a certain status is an idea which still looks controversial to the masses, despite the vast and always large number of events which could instantly give credibility to similar scenarios. That is why our conclusions will appear absolutely nonsensical without a full and clear understanding of their inherent context, and that is, the reason behind the choice of A equals 440 Hz as a universal concert pitch is far from being random, thus being connected with a much broader agenda. Hence, the suppression of any alternative proposition such as A equals 432 Hz in this case is not only perfectly logical but absolutely necessary. Indeed, the choice for any musical pitch which is apparently incoherent with humans and nature itself perfectly fits within the scenario which has been created and imposed by the hidden hand along history and in which we are all living in, a world of economic injustice, violence, propaganda, 
where human beings perceive their existences resembling more the life of domestic animals rather than free and independent individuals living in a state of perennial stress and anxiety provided by the system. In this brave new world, or new Atlantis, as we might call it, entertainment would not only acquaint the role of producing an endless amount of distractions for the masses, but it is indeed one of the latent providers of such distress and anxiety. Hence, the spiritual role which music regained in ancient times is therefore totally lost, sacrificed to the altar of consumerism and profit. Interestingly, one of the most important discoveries which we can document, thanks to the various researches we have quoted, is that the ISO standard tuning of A equals 440 Hz seems to be causing indeed these specific effects, enhancing distress and causing antisocial behavior in humans. You probably feel a lot more calmer and serene when you're feeling the stream, the water. It's actually 432 Hz. The dolphins' uh, frequency is 8 Hz. So when this frequency was changed in the 1930s, it's speculations on that, but apparently it was really to start manipulating uh, consciousness and in, in the human mind to keep us in that state of anxiety. So Not without amazement, most of the researchers into the A440, A432 debate have come to these identical conclusions. For instance, in Maria Reynolds' important study, intervals, scales, tones, and concert pitch A432, we can find that the Verdi tuning has been preferred against the ISO standard by more than 90% of the 2,000 people involved in specific audio tests. The author then goes to explain that certain negative behaviors within the participants, such as distress or confusion, appeared only when the instruments used were tuned to A equals 440 hertz. Such claims are contained also in the book 432 hertz, The Musical Revolution by Ricardo T. Tuis, where the author openly admits that the only reason why such incoherent pitch is still being used is to perpetuate a state of latent distress, confusion and anxiety in the minds of human beings. Other researchers such as Andra Doria, Ananda Bosnam or Flavia Vallega not mentioning the totality of musicians connected to the Schiller Institute, have confirmed and supported these ideas within their work. Going back to our premises, it is no surprise that one of the most important organizations behind the choice of A equals 440 Hz, such as the Nazi movement, was highly skilled and connected into the occult, social engineering and mass manipulation, thus giving even more credit to the hypothesis we have outlined. These all would be just one of the many different aspects of our lives to be manipulated according to secret agendas, such as the suppression of alternative energy and medicine, the attack on nature via GMOs and highly processed foods, the creation of wars and planned economical crises, etc. In a few words, music in modern times would have to be just one of the many means for a subtle mass manipulation. Also thanks to the literary hegemony of the media and the rise of the digital age, in such a way that every TV program, radio broadcast, concert or album could be a silent weapon to distort people's consciousness via this incoherent pitch. The suppression of any pro-432 Hz dissident movement, such as the 23,000 musicians collected in 1971 by the professor Robert Dussault, head of the National Conservatoire in Paris, in order to go back to the A equal 432 Hz standard, indicates even more that such hypotheses could not be far from the actual truth. I might conclude first quoting Jonathan Tannenbaum's words contained in his very important essay called The Foundations of Scientific Musical Tuning. Quote, no musical tuning is acceptable which is not based on a pitch value from middle C of 256 Hz, corresponding to A no higher than 432 Hertz. In view of this present scientific knowledge, all other tunings, including A 440 Hertz, must be rejected as invalid and arbitrary." Unquote. These claims, despite their apparent controversial and radical nature, acquire a significant amount of sense, especially if connected to all the evidence that has emerged through the author's research and which we have briefly referred to in this presentation. For instance, Another point extremely worth to be mentioned is the extreme coherence between sounds under the natural domain, such as most birds' calls, and the tones relative to the A432 Hz pitch, 
something which has been proven and discussed in several articles and presentations by some of the most important figures in the field, such as the already named Flavia Vallega or Brian T. Collins, journalist, musician, researcher into the A432 Hertz and one of the most enthusiastic supporters of this tuning today. Indeed, these kind of experiments have been successfully repeated by the author, ultimately proving not only the validity of such claims, but also the fascinating continuance embedded within all of these different natural phenomena. Sadly, this is another fundamental concept which has been progressively eradicated from our modern culture in order to depict nature and life itself as a fruit of mere chance and chaos, thus justifying all the different types of manipulations we can witness today. This all brings to a reasonable and logical conclusion to this debate. There is a better alternative to our current A 440 Hz standard, and that is the Verdi tuning of A equals 432 Hz. Interestingly, even within our current and equally criticized equal temperament system, according to the work of Maria Reynolds, quote, If one can convince piano tuners to use C equals 428 Hz tuning pitch, they are generally surprised to find that the piano sounds so much more beautiful, even with equal tempered tuning." Unquote. Therefore, I finally recommend any musician who might not be familiar with such information not only to individually experiment and confront these two standards we have compared, but also to take some time to individually research all the background material which is available concerning this topic, in order to gain some further insight and perhaps radically change for good one's approach to music.